Hello everyone, my name is Dishab. Today I am talking about lubrication system used in engines. What is lubrication system? Lubrication system are used to introduce oil, grease and other lubricants to moving machine parts. The lubricants reduce friction between parts and therefore increase the longevity of all components without lubricants. Most machine would overheat or suffer extreme damage. Proper lubrication may be the single most important aspect of machine and auto line. A well oiled automobile will outlast poorly maintained models by many years. Industrial machinery is no different and a good lubrication system can help save a lot of money and hassle in the future. There are many types of lubricating system available depending on the application. Force feed lubricating system and pressure feed lubricating system are typically used in internal combustion engines. In this system, a pump forces oil into engine beams. If this pump becomes defective, the engine stops receiving oil and may suffer engine failure. In lubricants, the most important factor is the fluid viscosity. Viscosity is the ability of the substance to resist flow under an applied force. The viscosity of lubricants changes and degrades with temperature which means that they may become permanently less effective after being subjected to extreme condition. The thickness of the liquid film is also a factor it can lead to surface fatigue. Now discuss about some examples. Introduction In engines, frictional losses are mainly due to sliding as well as rotating parts. Engine friction is expressed in terms of frictional power that is Fp is equal to Ip minus Bp. Frictional losses is mainly attributed to the following mechanical losses like direct frictional losses, pumping losses and power loss to drive components to change and scavenge and power loss to drive other auxiliary components. A good engine design should not the total frictional losses to be more than 30% of energy input in reciprocating engine. It should be the aim of a good designer to reduce friction and wear of the part subjected to relative motion. This is achieved by proper lubrication system. Direct frictional losses. It is the power absorbed due to relative motion of different bearing surfaces such as piston rings, main bearings, camshaft bearings, etc. The frictional losses are comparatively higher in reciprocating engines. Next one is pumping loss. For four-stroke engine, pumping loss is considered amount of energy spent during the exhaust processes. The pumping loss is the net power spent by the engine that is piston on the working medium on gases during intake and exhaust strokes. But in two-stroke engines, this is negligible since the incoming fresh mixture is used to scavenge the exhaust gases. Power loss to drive the components to change and scavenge. For a four-stroke engine in turbo supercharge, for a four-stroke engine in turbo supercharge engines, the intake charge is supplied at a higher pressure than the aspirated engine. For this purpose, mechanically driven compressor or turbine driven compressor is used accordingly. The engine is called supercharge or turbocharged engine. These devices take away a part of engine output. The this loss is considered as negative frictional losses. For a two-stroke engine with a scavenging pump, the power to the drive the pump is supplied by the engines. Power loss to drive other auxiliary components that is a good percentage of generated power output is spent to drive auxiliaries such as water pump, lubricating oil pump, fuel pump, cooling pan, pan generator etc. For a mechanical efficiency, the mechanical losses can be written in terms of MEP, where the frictional MEP can be expressed as F is equal to MMAP plus PMAP plus AMAP plus CMAP, where MMAP is MAP required to overcome mechanical friction, PMAP required to charging and scavenging, AMAP required to MAP required to drive the auxiliary component, CMAP is the required drive compressor or scavenging pump. Mechanical efficiency is defined as the ratio of BP to IP or we can say BMAP to IMAP where BP upon IP is equal to mechanical 
एफिशिएंसी मैकेनिकल फ्रिक्शन फ्रिक्शन लॉसेस कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर इन द बेरिंग सर्फेसिस ऑफ द इंजन कॉम्पोनेंट ड्यू टू देयर रिलेटिव मोशन मैकेनिकल फ्रिक्शन इन इंजन में भी डिवाइडेड इन टू सिक्स क्लासेस विच आर फ्लूड फिल्म और हाइड्रोडाइनमिक फ्रिक्शन पार्शल फिल्म फ्रिक्शन रोलिंग फ्रिक्शन ड्राई फ्रिक्शन एंड जनरल बेरिंग फ्रिक्शन एंड फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू पिस्टन मोशन मैकेनिकल फ्रिक्शन फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू पिस्टन मोशन वेयर फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू मोशन ऑफ द पिस्टन कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू विस्कस फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू पिस्टन नॉन विस्कस फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू पिस्टन रिंग्स द नॉन विस्कस पिस्टन रिंग फ्रिक्शन कैन बी फर्दर सब डिवाइडेड इन टू फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू रिंग टेंशन एंड फ्रिक्शन ड्यू टू गैस प्रेशर बिहाइंड द रिंग नेक्स्ट वन इज ब्लो बाय लॉसेज इट इज अ फिनोमना ऑफ लीकेज ऑफ कंपर्शन प्रोडक्ट दैट इज गैसेज फ्रॉम द सिलेंडर टू द क्रैंकेज पास द पिस्टन एंड पिस्टन रिंग्स इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कंप्रेशन रेशियो इनलेट प्रेशर एंड द कंडीशन ऑफ द पिस्टन रिंग इन द केस ऑफ वॉर्न आउट पिस्टन रिंग दिस लॉस इज मोर दिस लॉस इज यूजली अकाउंटेड इन द ओवरऑल फ्रिक्शन लॉसेज नेक्स्ट वन इज ब्लो डाउन लॉस to reduce the work spent by the piston to drive out the exhaust gases the exhaust valve is made to open before piston reaches bdc on its expansion stroke during this period the combustion gases rush out of cylinder due to pressure differences because of this there is a certain loss of power induced this loss is called the blow down losses this loss is mainly depend on exhaust valve timing and size with large valve area and earlier exhaust valve opening the blow down loss will be higher whereas with increasing in speed this loss tends to be lower now we discuss the factor affecting mechanical friction various factor affecting the engine friction like engine design in which stroke bore ratio effect of engine size piston rings compression ratio general bearings are main consideration and other ones are engine speed engine load cooling water temperature and oil viscosity next we will discuss about function of lubrication why we use lubrication to reduce friction and wear between the moving part to provide sealing action to cool the surfaces by carrying away the heat generated in engine components and to clean the surfaces by washing away carbon and metal particles caused by wear lubrication system has the function is to provide sufficient quantity of cool and filter oil to give positive and adequate lubrication to all the moving part the various lubrication system used for ic engines are mist lubrication wet sump lubrication dry sump lubrication etc first we discuss mist lubrication system this system is used where crankcase lubrication is not suitable in two stroke engine as the charge is compressed in the crankcase it is not possible to have the lubricating oil or oil in the sump in such engines the lubricating oil is mixed with fuel the usual ratio being 3 to 6% the oil and the fuel induced through the carburetor the fuel vaporizes and the oil is in the form of mist goes via the crankcase in it to the cylinder advantage of mist lubrication systems are its simplicity and low cost whereas disadvantage are many it causes heavy exhaust smoke get contaminated with acids and result in corrosion of bearing surfaces calls for thorough mixing for effective lubrication and the engine will suffer from insufficient lubrication as the supply of fuel is less now we discuss about wet sump lubrication system the bottom of the crankcase contain an oil pan or sump from which the lubricating oil is pumped to the various component by a pump after lubricating the parts the oil flows back to the sump by gravity there are three varieties in wet sump lubricating system the splash system the splash and pressure system and the pressure system splash system is used in light duty vehicles the lubricating oil charge in to the bottom of the crankcase and maintain at predetermined level the oil is drawn by a pump and delivered through a distributing pipe into the splash trough a splasher or a dipper is provided under each connecting rod cap 
Here you see the diagram of splash lubricating system. Now splash and pressure lubricating system. The lubricating oil is supplied under pressure to maintain and camshaft bearing. The oil is also supplied under pressure to pipes which direct a stream of oil against the tippers on the big end and connecting road bearing cup. The crank pin bearings are lubricated by the splash or spray of oil through by, by the tipper. Here you see splash and pressure lubrication system diagram. Now pressure feed system. The oil is forced to all the main bearings of crankshaft. Pressure relief valve is fitted to maintain the predictable pressure value. Oil hole is drilled from the center of each crank pin to the center of an adjacent main channel through which oil can pass from the main bearing to the crank pin. Here is the diagram of pressure feed system. Now discuss about dry sump lubricating system. In this system, the oil is carried in an external tank. An oil pump draws oil from the supply tank and circulates it under the pressure to the various bearings of the engines. Oil dripping from the cylinders and bearings into the sump is removed via scavenging pump which in turn the oil is passed through a filter and fed back to the supply tank. The capacity of the scavenging pump is always greater than the oil pump. A separate oil cooler provides to remove heat from the oil. Here you see the diagram of dry sum lubricating system. Now crankcase ventilation. During the compression and expression strokes, the gas inside the cylinder gets past the piston rings and enters the crankcase which is called blow by. It contains water vapor, sulfuric acid, if this contamination is appreciable amount, it causes corrosion of steel parts. This may also promote sludge formation in lubricating oil. When amount of vapor condensed becomes considerable in cold weather, this may freeze and cause damage. You see the diagram of crankcase ventilation. Crankcase ventilation. Case ventilation is also used to removal of blow by by can be achieved effectively by passing a constant stream of fresh air through a crankcase known as crankcase ventilation. By doing so, not only all water vapor but also a considerable proportion of fuel in the blow by may be removed from crankcase. The crankcase must have an in air inlet and outlet for the effective crankcase ventilation. It is possible to connect the crankcase outlet to the air cleaner where the inlet suction serves to ventilate the crankcase and unburned fuel gases as well as the water vapor are then drawn into the cylinder where the fuel has another chance to burn. Now lubricants. The type of lubricants are animal lubricants, vegetable lubricants, mineral lubricants and synthetic lubricants. Animal lubricants. Lubricants with animal origins like tallow, tallow oil, lard oil, neat food oil, papaws oil, etc. These are highly stable at normal temperatures. Animal lubricants may not be used for internal combustion because they produce fatty acids. Vegetable lubricants. Example of vegetable lubricants are castor oil, olive oil, cottonseed oil, animal and vegetable oils have a lower coefficient of friction than most mineral oil but they rapidly wear away steel. Mineral lubricants. These lubricants are used to a large extent in the lubrication of internal combustion engines. There are three classifications of mineral lubricant: solid, semi-solid and fluids. Synthetic lubricants. Because of high operating temperature of engines, it becomes necessary to develop lubricants which would retain their characteristics at temperature that cause petroleum lubricants to evaporate and break down. Synthetic lubricants do not break down easily and do not produce coke or other deposits. Lubricating oil properties are gravity, flash point, viscosity, cloud point, power point, ash test, carbon residue test and precipitation number, corrosion and